All praise to the most high. How y'all doing this Sabbath day? Good. Sisters, how are y'all doing? Good. Brothers, how are y'all doing? Good. All praise to the most high. We're going to touch on a few things today. Uh, you know, one of my favorite topics is the woman. I just love talking about them. Let's do it. This is how you watch CNC. Hey, this is how you watch CNC. Hey, keeping the faith in the king. And the patience will give us the strength. I'm trying to think, I didn't think of a title for today. Uh, hey, uh, we're going to call today's class Worshipping the Woman. It was Worshipping the Big Butt Woman, but all women ain't got big butts, so we're just going to call it Worshipping the Woman. <coughs> <laughs> we're going to open up with uh, Acts, the 19th chapter. Hey, Bishop. Yes. The scripture says, from woman came the beginning of sin. So we got to talk about the women. We do. We got to put these brothers on guard and make the sisters remember the sin of Eve. Yes. So, what we're going to do is touch on Acts the 19th chapter. Let's go over there. <coughs> no. Acts 19, we're going to start at verse 21. The book of Acts, chapter 19 and verse 21. After these things were ended, Paul pur purposed in the spirits when he had passed through Macedonia and, and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he went into Macedonia. Two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Eritus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. Uh, can I have a map of Asia Minor, please? I'd like to see a map of Asia Minor. So what I want you all to notice is that the two companions Paul had with him was Timothy, that's Timotheus, and Erastus. We, we really don't hear too much about Erastus. A map of Asia Minor. Okay, where's Thyatira? Point to it so I can see. Okay. All right, where's Ephesus? Okay, all right. Now, what we're reading here, let's go back now to Acts 19 and verse 21 again. Acts chapter 19, verse 21. After these things were ended, were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he was passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. So the Asia is talking about is Asia Minor. Go ahead. At the same time, there arose no small stir about the way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. Now I want to show you all a picture of Diana. Uh, let's, I sent it, I sent it over, just post it, send, send over the picture, let's take it. Okay, that's one, give me the first one, yeah, that's one, and put the other one beside it also. The other one, I don't know if you know how to do it, if you can put both beside each other. Oh, they know how to do it? Okay, this is the, uh, Greek goddess Diana. And if you, if you notice, you see all of the eggs around her? Those are breasts, okay? But this is where Easter also comes from. And this is the ancient God. This is most modern. Uh, this is the um, stylized version of her. Give me the other one. Blow that one up. Okay, let me see the words. It says, throughout the Roman Empire, the two, okay, the two, throughout the Roman Empire, the goddess of fertility, Diana, as she was known, at Ephesus, was worshipped at the vernal equinox. Vernal equinox means spring. Uh, then it says, both Polycarp and Polycrates, well, how do you pronounce it? those two guys, were unsuccessful in their attempt to keep this pagan festival from being substituted for God's Passover. So from this goddess, go down, go back up to the top, is where you got um, Easter, <coughs> Ishtar, Ashtoreth, mm -hmm. Esther, all of it comes from this. And here in Asia Minor, they called her Diana. This is where you get the Easter eggs from. 
Let's go back now to Acts 19. I'm going to show you something. Uh, what verse were you in? Verse 24, Bishop. Go ahead. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. So this dude made idols. These idols you see here, he made small ones and sold them in the marketplace. Go ahead. Whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we, ha we have our wealth. So they were very wealthy based upon selling the idol of Diana. This was a very famous goddess. The goddess of the moon, oh, she's called the moon goddess, and also the goddess of fertility. Go ahead. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone that Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia. So where are they located, brothers? But where? Where in Asia Minor? Where? We just read it. I don't need y'all to pay attention. Ephesus. They're in Ephesus, which is located in Asia Minor. Read verse 26 again. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia. Notice that part, but almost throughout all Asia. Put the map back up. I'm going to show you something. So, point to Asia, I mean, not point to uh, Ephesus for me. Ephesus. I want the map that was on there earlier. You didn't keep it? Seven churches. All right. Point to Ephesus for me. Okay, y'all see Ephesus down there beneath Smyrna. Okay, you got Pergamon, you got Thyatira, Sardis, uh, Smyrna, Philadelphia, Ephesus, and Laodicea. So it says almost throughout all Asia. That part again, it says, what else was it? Read that part again. Say, we don't want again, I'm all right. Moreover, ye see that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia. So they were in Ephesus, but he says almost throughout all of Asia, this goddess was worshipped. And that's going to play a pivotal point as we read on. Go ahead. This Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods, which are made with hands. So they were in danger of losing their wealth, because Paul and his companions... <laughs> Who are his companions? We just read their names. Timotheus and who else? Erastus. They were out there teaching and people were starting to believe and cast those idols away. Let's read on. So that not only is our craft in danger to be set at naught, to be set at nothing, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised. People are gonna start hating going to the temple. Now you know when you go into the temple, you had to pay offerings. They said, this is going to mess up our money. Go ahead. And her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipped. All Asia and the world worshipped this goddess. Go ahead. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. She was called Diana of the Ephesians. Great is Diana of the Ephesians. What we're seeing here is the one of the Pivotal points of woman worship. Woman worship. Go ahead. And the whole city was filled with confusion, and having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into their theater. So Paul had other companions that they caught, Gaius and Aristarchus. Go ahead. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing, and some another, for the assembly was confused. We, we saw, you know, remember we was in Uganda, and it's one, I think it was a damn Nilo Hamite, whatever the hell he was, mm -hmm. caused a confusion and riled up all the people and they didn't know what they was uh turning on us for mm -hmm. this one dude hated the scriptures and almost turned the whole crowd on us it happens often so when i read this i, I could relate to it that some therefore cried one thing and some another for the assembly was confused and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together and they drew alexander out of the multitude the jews putting him forward and alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all 
all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. You better imagine that. Just imagine that for the space of two hours, this dude, Alexander, couldn't speak because the crowd kept screaming, Great is Diana of the Ephesians for two whole hours. That's confusion for you right there. Go ahead. And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fall, that which fell down from Jupiter? So they had a myth that that image fell down from Jupiter, the god Jupiter it was sent down. That was the myth. Now watch this. See, for, for, hold on. First Timothy chapter 1. First Timothy chapter 1. <laughs> and we're going to start at verse 1. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in faith. Now, who's one of Paul's companions that we just read about in Acts 19? Timothy. Right, Timothy. Go ahead. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus. Paul asked Timothy to abide still at Ephesus. Who was the who were they worshiping in Ephesus? Diana. Diana. Go ahead. When I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Don't teach no other doctrine than what the commandments of God says. Now, that's pivotal. That he said that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. That is, that's very important for when we read on. Now watch this. Go to chapter 2 and verse 9. Now we get a better understanding. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse, and verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefaintness and sobriety. Stop! Go back to the idol. Go back to the idol. Go back to the idol. This image was so famous, women patterned themselves behind this. Talk about Israelite women would pattern themselves behind this. So Paul was instructing them in the law. Because many times, you, why is he telling them how to dress? Because this was fashion. Having your tip, your breast is out. Okay, you gotta, when you read about Greek culture and all that, you have many of our women following that Greek, these Greek customs. If they didn't have both of them out, they had one out. It was the thing to do. Verse nine again. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Can you type in, do me a favor, type in toga, Greek toga for women. I just wanna see, there's one particular one that I saw. That's just a brief example of one of the Greek togas of how they dress. Now, many hoes dress like that to this day. That's fashion. But this is an example of how they dressed back then. And even some more so with the breast out. One breast or two breasts. Okay? So here back in 1 Timothy 2, Paul, verse 9 again, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Because the Greek apparel was very, uh, uh, give me a word, immodest, thank you, immodest. Go ahead. With shamefaintness and sobriety, mm -hmm. not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. So verse 10, he's explaining the thing that women need to pattern themselves after first and foremost, is good works, professing godliness. Now he wasn't saying not to braid your hair and you couldn't wear gold or costly clothes. He said their focus is good works. Go ahead, now watch verse 11. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the men, but to be in silence. Stop. Why did he have to give that commandment? Only one hand is up. I want you to think about what we've been reading. Two, three hands are up. Four. Let me see right here. Right here. Shalom, uh Soldier -huh. Eliezer. Eliezer. Yes, sir. Uh, the reason being because the woman were taking out the image of Diana, so they have that 
feminist spirit we felt like they could teach the men right to be a it was, remember the men were worshiping the women the women had authority okay that so when the, some sisters were repenting they were bringing that spirit into the congregation so paul had to not only correct them how they dress he had to correct them on how they conducted themselves this ain't no woman fest this ain't no worship th like you see the committed community they go the black woman is god no she ain't no, she ain't. Stop. If she was a god, she could pay her rent. If she was a god, she wouldn't be on welfare. Right. Or a ratchet away in somebody else's hair. Right. <laughs> verse 11 again. Verse Timothy 2, verse 11. But let the women, but the, let the woman learn in... It doesn't say but. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the men but to be in silence. You have to realize that the men who were not in the truth bow to the, this image. Women were glorified in Asia Minor. They bowed, the men bowed down to the women. Go ahead. For, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. Now Paul has to explain. He said, let me give you a little history on why you sisters shouldn't be running your mouths in the church bringing your goddess of, uh, what's her name? Diana stuff up in here. He said, goes through the history. He said, because, that's what four means, Adam was first formed, then Eve. And, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. He said, but regardless, if you women want to be saved, you shall be saved in childbearing. Now that don't mean just pop out babies. That childbearing goes back to what? Who knows the precept? It goes back to what historically? Childbearing. I see two hands. Let me hear if you haven't heard. You. Yep. Who got the mic? Childbearing. 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 What does that go back to? Shalom. Who are you? <coughs> Brother Uriel. Brother Uriel. Genesis 3 and 16? Yes, Genesis 3.16. Let's read it. Paul wasn't just saying just pop out babies. If that was the case, all these women be saved. But he's no, they're all not going to be saved just because they're popping out babies. He's going to give the history on it. The book of Genesis, chapter 3 and verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. This is the childbearing. In thy sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Where does the sorrow come from? Because of her disobedience to her husband, who did, which was disobedient to God's law, she gets the childbearing pains. She gets the menstrual cramps. Go ahead. Was that it? No, sir. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. If, you do, if the woman desires anything, it's to be to her husband. I'll give you an example. If she desires wisdom, watch this, knowledge. Go to 1 Corinthians uh, 14. Yes. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 33. No, not 33. No, 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 no. Uh, verse 35. Verse 35. Wait, 34 and 35 together. Verse 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. That's Genesis 3.16, read. And if they will learn anything. If she desires to learn anything, go ahead. Let them ask their husbands at home. It says ask your husband. Why? Because that's what Eve did not want to do. Eve said, I'm not listening to you. You ain't nothing. I'm going to the spirit over here. I don't care if God put you over me. I'm not listening to you. You ain't nobody. I'm going over here. And look what happened. What, did you finish that? No, sir. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Let's go back to Timothy now. Let's go right back there again. And what verse did you leave off in Timothy? Verse 14. No, verse 15. Okay. 1 Timothy 2, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. Now we understand what that childbearing is making reference to. If now they, we understand. If the, they pain, the pain of childbirth, the menstrual cramps, okay, 
learning from her husband. She got to be obedient to that. That's all that's going with. Go ahead. If they continue in faith. And it says, if they continue in faith. That's the belief in Christ, right? And charity. Charity means loving your neighbor as you love yourself. He said the women got to have that too. You know, some sisters say, I don't get along with sisters. I'll, I'll, all my friends are male friends. You ever hear that? That's a hoe. That's a hoe. That's cold world right there. Oh, I don't talk to women. All my friends is men. Okay. Read that again. And charity. And holiness with sobriety. And holiness with Sobriety means having a clear head about what God's laws is. Be sober-minded. Give me um, 1 Corinthians 11 now. In verse 3. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. So now we understand why Paul had to say this. Right? But I would have you know. So verse 1. Verse 1. Be ye followers of me even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. Keep the laws as I deliver them to you. Read. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Now we understand a little better why Paul kept stressing this. Because the congregation was coming from these locations where women were being worshipped. The men were worshipping women. He said, what the hell is this? And the women was usurping authority. He said, no, this is all out of order here in Corinth. You Ephesians too. The hell, everything's out of order. I got to straighten it. Put it right back in God's divine order. From there, let's go to Jeremiah 44. Let's go back to the Old Testament. And we're going to start at verse 15. So, Ephesus, throughout Asia Minor, that wasn't the first time women was being worshipped. So don't think it's odd. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Watch. Jeremiah 44, 15. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 44, and verse 15. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Paphros, answered Jeremiah, saying, So you had Israelites in Egypt. And watch what happened. Go ahead. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. So the women were the ones speaking over their husbands. Because look at verse 15. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by a great multitude of them, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, that's in Africa, Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, what verse 16 say again? As for the Lord that thou hast spoken unto us. This is the women speaking to Jeremiah. 16 once again. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. The women was controlling the house. They said, we ain't listening to that Bible. To hell with you and to hell with that Bible you preach. It's the same spirit today. Some of them might be sitting in here, sprinkled in here, being quiet just for the moment. But some of y'all know when you go home, yeah, 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 that's not edifying. Why he got to say this? Why he got to say that? What's that all about? And you sit there like a church mouse. <laughs> you is this type of husband right here. Go ahead. <laughs> but we will certainly do whatsoever thing go with forth out of our own mouth. Who's speaking here? The women. The women. Read verse 17 again. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing go with forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven. Stop. Give me the image of the queen of heaven. Give me the Egyptian image. The queen of heaven. The queen of heaven. There we go. That's it. Nimrod, God, man, sun god. That's on the left. Center one is Ra, Egyptian sun god. The third one is Isis, Egyptian queen of heaven. Goddess, a.k.a. meaning also known as Asherah, Ashtoreth, Astarte, Diana, Venus. That's right there on the far right. The woman goddess. Okay? So here in Jeremiah 44, they were worshiping Isis, the queen of heaven. That's the same thing in the Catholic Church when they worship Mary. Hail Mary, Mother of God. You Latino ones, y'all know full well what I'm talking about. 
and you do the sign of the cross, hell man, Santa Maria, Santa Maria, oh shut the hell up. It goes back to woman worship again. Verse 17 again. Verse 17. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah. So the women are saying it ain't just us doing it. The kings was doing it in Israel. The men were doing it too. Go ahead. And, and in the streets of Jerusalem, for then had we plenty of, of, vit, of vittles, and were well, and saw no evil. They, they said, when we worship Isis, the mother goddess of the queen, the mother goddess queen of heaven, we saw no evil. This is what they're saying to Jeremiah. We don't. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven. When we stopped worshiping her, what happened? And to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things. We we lacked all things. We started to lack. You know, some of y'all here might have that spirit. Since I left the church, I've been suffering. Hold on, give me Matthew uh, 4, verse 8, where Satan was going to bless Christ. It might be verse 6. I'm not looking at it, so I want you to find it for me. It's between verse 5 and 8, I'm guessing. I'll give you all this, Satan said to Christ. Give me that. The book of St. Matthew, chapter 4, and verse 8. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the, of the world, and the glory of them, and, said, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Satan told Christ, If you worship me, I'm going to give you all the riches and fame of the world out here. That's what Satan said to Christ. So don't... Ask, or you should have a better understanding now. Hey, you have two options. If you worship the devil, you will get blessed temporarily. Some of them know what I'm talking about. They knew when they was worshiping these other gods, things was going good. But as soon as you stop worshiping the devil, now you start to lack. Things go wrong. Why? Give me Sirach 2. We went over this briefly last night. Sirach 2 and 1. The book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 1. This is what the women didn't want to go through. Here, read that. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. Go ahead. And make not haste in time of trouble. Make not haste in time of trouble. I mean, don't run from this truth. Go ahead. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Here it comes. And be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. You see that low estate? The Lord is saying, when you come to serve him, he's going to try you. He's going to put you in a low estate. Now let's go back to Jeremiah. Notice what the women said here. Jeremiah 44, verse 18. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven. Since we stopped worshiping the devil. And to pour out drink offerings unto her. We have wanted all things. We lack. We turn to a low estate. Once we stop serving Satan... Now we turn to a lower state. Why? Because you, Jeremiah, you told us to worship the Most High. Now all the riches we had, we lost. We don't want to go through that no more. That's what the women were saying right there. That's what some of your wives be saying at home. Go ahead. And have been consumed by the sword and by famine. And when we burned incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her? and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men so she says you she says to jeremiah they say to jeremiah our husbands knew exactly what we were doing they're the ones they're supposed to be the head of the house they ain't saying nothing to us they let us do whatever we want and the men just sitting there so jeremiah had his hands full with the israelites the women was usurping authority, worshiping the queen of heaven and the men were mealy mouthed marshmallow misunderstood Yellow make me sad shops. Zeta boys. Is that a term, Zeta boy? Yes. A Zeta boy. Can you type that in? Make sure I got the right name. Zeta. Z E T A. A Zeta boy. Zeta man, whatever the term. Zeta. Z E T A. Male. Zeta male. A Zeta male. Z E T A. Zeta male refers to the fourth social hierarchy position among males. Alpha being the top, 
beta is the second, omega the rest, Zeta males consciously reject the traditional social position as, is, as it is based on how they are valued by women. And it says a Zeta male can be straight, going to both a homosexual. So that's that mealy mouth misunderstood boy. Why can't the women leave? Why we can't let them do whatever they want to do? What's wrong with that? That's a Zeta male. Why can't I wear tight pants? My wife wears tight pants. What's wrong with that? That's a Zeta male. Zeta male. Go back. <laughs> Jeremiah 44 verse 19. No. From there, give me Acts 17 now. I'm jumping, going right back now to New Testament. Acts 16, verse 14. The book of Acts, chapter 16 and verse 14. And a certain woman named... So you brothers, understand this. When you... Give me the scripture, hide in the wind. Hide in the wind. Give me that. In Proverbs. Notice the men were quiet when Jeremiah, the prophet of God, addressed them. They didn't say nothing. It was the women doing the talking, worshiping ISIS. Watch. You got it for me? It says, hide the wind. Hide the wind. Hide the wind. Whoever got it for me, let me know. Proverbs 27, 16. Proverbs 27, 16. Thank you. You see it in camp a lot? The book of Proverbs, chapter 27 and verse 16. Start at 15. Verse 15. A continual dropping in a very rainy day, and a contentious woman are alike. You ever get a drip, a drip in your house, and you, and you put the pad under it, and it's going, boop, boop, boop. After a while, it gets what? Oh. Annoying. The Bible says a contentious woman, meaning an argumentative woman, is like that. Now watch what it says next. Whosoever hideth her, hideth the wind, and the ointment of his right hand, which beweareth itself. Whosoever hides her, hideth, can you brothers hide the wind? No. And the ointment of his right hand, which beweareth itself. If you spray cologne on your right hand, can you hide the smell? No. People are going to, I smell evil. And it's going to be right over there. And you husbands who sat around trying to make ex cause this you're trying to make excuses for her. I'm going to give you a clue on how to find out if you, if you got a Zeta boy in your midst. If his wife does something evil and he wants to speak and justify her. Give me Numbers chapter 5. Let me show you something on that. It just popped into my head. Numbers chapter 5, I think. Watch. What happens when you think a woman is in the midst of sin? Let's see if we got Captain Saberhole in the scripture. Numbers 5, and let's start at verse 14 and 15. Watch this. Here's the law. <coughs> the book of Numbers, chapter 5 and verse 14. And the spirit of jealousy come upon him. And he start above it. Start at 13. Verse 13. And the, no, start at 12. Verse 12. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, if any man's wife go aside and commit a trespass against him, and the man lie with her carnally, and it be hid from the eyes of her husband. Stop! That's very important. How often, now it ain't that often you catch somebody in the midst of adultery. We know about maybe three cases where they got surprised. One was right here in Arizona, where the nookah was hiding under the bed. <laughs> Surprise! Caught the dude right there. Another one was in Detroit where the brother opened the door and a Negro was laying in his wife's lap with his head in her crotch. Oh, that's right. I remember that. picture. Now, that ain't all the case, though. Some cases you don't find out right away. You just have a, a feeling something's not right. You come home and you smell badissi. That smell. You, I know the smell. Read that again. <laughs> Numbers 5, verse 13. Here's a wicked woman now. Why has he got to say that? That's not edifying. Oh, yes, it is. <coughs> Go ahead. And a man lie with her carnally, and it be hid from the eyes of her husband, and be kept close, 
and she be defiled, and there is no witness against her, she shall be taken with the matter. I'm going to tell you a story. New York. <laughs> Brother and his wife, they separate for a little bit. And he calls her one night, and another man answers the phone. Oh, wow. Who are you? He said, I'm the friend of this sister such and such. Why are you in my house? He said, she invited me over. Now, you ain't here anyway. You left. So wow. now the wife then says, we ain't do nothing. You know, he's just hanging, you know, hanging out. Wow. His little daughter says, daddy, he stayed here for three nights. Oh. Hmm. Now here comes the Zeta boy attitude. We said, bruh, she got to go. That's a hoe. She got to go. You know what the little Zeta boy's response was? Nobody saw the penis going in and out. Wow. Then, How often are you going to see that? That is so rare. Wow. This is why Numbers 5 is written for us. Wow. Let's read that again. <coughs> Verse 14 now. Verse 14. That's what the dude said. There's no witnesses. He's, he wanted to keep this hole so bad. He's yelling at us like we're the enemies. <laughs> you didn't see it, brother. You didn't see it. How you want to say she's sleeping with another dude? You destroyed dude. my marriage. Yeah, he's going to tell us, you destroyed my marriage. Brother, your baby said the dude slept in the house for three nights. And there's another one. I get a call. Bishop. He go to woman. Bishop, I just got a question for you. Yes, yeah, sis, what's going on? She says, you know, I'm, I'm uh, betrothed to brother so-and-so. Oh, yeah, I know brother so-and-so. Good brother, good brother, good brother. Yeah, uh, but I was at work the other day, and it was raining real hard. And I'm driving home, and I saw one of my co-workers walking in the rain. You know that song, I saw you and him walking in the rain. So anyway. She says, I tell, I'm going to tell him, get into the car, I'm going to take him to the bus stop. I take him to the bus stop, we're sitting in the car, bus don't come. One hour go by, two hours go by, three hours go by. I say, hey, why don't you just crash at my apartment for the night? The she takes him to the apartment, and then the brother calls, and the dude answers the phone. So the brother, that's what I says, the, the marriage is off, we ain't getting married. Now she called me, can you tell him we didn't do anything and to marry me? No, because you're stupid. How am I going to tell him to marry you when he got that spirit of what? Jealousy on him. He don't know what you was doing with this dude. She, I, I slept on the couch and he slept in the bed. Oh, you slept on the couch and he slept in the bed. See, some of you be thinking we making stuff. I ain't making nothing up. We got some real trifling, <coughs> uh, ratchet people. I'll just say people. In here, read that again. Wow. Verse 14. And the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled. Or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be not defiled. So it could be he got that spirit of jealousy on him. She could be defiled. She could not be defiled. This is what the book of Timothy says. Y'all can find it for me later on. It says, avoid all no, find the description. Nobody know what I'm talking about. Thessalonians, it might be chapter four. It says avoid all appearance. That one. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. Attack! I thought y'all was with me. I heard silence. In the space of two hours here. Find me that scripture. The book of First Thessalonians, chapter five and verse twenty-two. Here we go. Listen good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearance of evil. <laughs> Don't take somebody home. If it could appear like you and him or you and her is together, don't do it. I don't care how desperate the person is in need, don't do it. Now back to Numbers 5. And read verse 14 once again. Verse 14. And the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled. Or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he'd be jealous of his wife, and she'd be not defiled. Another example. Brother comes home, and you know women like to lock, put a lock uh, on their little cell phone. So the brother goes, babe, what is the uh, password to your phone? Why? What is the password to your phone? Now, when you hear why, that means red flag should go up. Babe, I said, what's the password to your phone? Why you want it? I want to see what's going on. So they argue. So she got a phone call. Then, you know, I'm going to show you how the most high work. She left her phone. 
And you know, some phones have a timer. It could, the, the screen could lock in a minute, five minutes, or never, or 10 minutes. She didn't change the adjuster, so it stayed open for like 10 minutes while she went to the restroom. So the husband now picks up the phone, and he goes through the text messages. And there's some dude named Barry. Last night, we had a good time. Now the husband says to her, hey babe, you went to work last night? Yeah, I was at work last night. He's looking, last night we had a good time. It was so fun. That, and the hotel was not that expensive either. Dun, 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 dun. Now you know there was fighting and bloodshed up in the house. So now, of course the argument from her is, you didn't see nothing, there's no witnesses. This is what this is all talking about. Now read verse 15. Verse 15. Then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest, and he shall bring her offerings for her, the tenth part of the ephah of barley mill. He shall pour no oil upon it, nor put frankincense thereon. For it is an offering of jealousy, an offering of memorial, bringing iniquity to remembrance. And the priest shall bring her near. See, the Lord had his own lie detector test back then. I wish we had this thing now, but go ahead. <coughs> and the priest shall bring her near and set her before the Lord. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel, and of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, the priest shall take and put it into the water. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and uncover the woman's head. Stop, very important, and uncover the woman's head. So what was her head before? Her head, her head was covered, okay, go ahead. And put the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the curse. And the priest shall charge her by an oath and say unto the woman, If no man have lied with thee, and if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanness with another instead of thy husband, be thou free from this bitter water that causes the curse. But if thou hast gone aside to another instead of thy husband, and if thou be defiled, and some man have lied with thee beside thine husband, then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing, and the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse, and an oath among thy people. When the Lord doth make the thigh to rot, and thy belly to swell. When it says your thigh to rot, that means your vagina to rot. You get the blue, you get the blue waffle. That's what he's saying, that's what the priest is saying. Go ahead. And this water that causes the curse shall go into thy bowels to make thy belly to swell and thy thigh to rot. Imagine that, a big belly. And you know, if they're, you would think she's pregnant, but no. She got a big belly and a stinking, rotten vagina. That's what it's talking about. What are we reading? The Bible. Now, this is some good lie detection right here. But go ahead. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. And the woman shall say, Amen. I, I, for all you Zeta boys out there, you know why that's important? When you catch the wife in something, and he's the Zeta spirit, he, oh no, don't talk to my wife. Bro, let me explain what happened. Why are you trying to explain something she did? Hey Bishop, well, he'll say, I know my wife, I right. know my wife. Don't, I'm not gonna receive that accusation. Right, I'm the God's Lord, you have to shut the hell up. This is what, remember who got accused of adultery? Susanna, remember Susanna? What was her husband allowed to say? Nothing. The accusation was there, all right, bring it in. Let's question this thing. But now, uh-uh, when, when a man tries to hide the evil of his wife, to babe, don't say nothing, I'm gonna do all the talking. You that Zeta boy, you that danger in the congregation that got to go, you and her. There's a new one, Bishop. Now, when brothers' wives get caught, right, in adultery, the brother will say, and this happened two times already, in Israel, the brother will say, no, I'm gonna remain with her because that's my whore. Wow, wow. That's my whore. Yeah, that's my whore. Wow. His brother got to put the wife with, but he can't do it. He's so weak. So he'd rather jump up in there after somebody done used and abused it. Man, you got seconds. Filthy, what is that expression? Sloppy seconds. Sloppy seconds. Filthy fourths. <laughs> what verse you at? That was verse 22, Bishop. Read on. Verse 23. And the priest shall write these curses in a book, and he shall blot them out with the bitter water. You know what's so evil about this? The woman, now I'm saying if the woman's guilty, she says, and the woman shall say, Amen. 
you would think you have um, enough fear to most high and say, no, I'm guilty, I'm not going in there, I'm not going to drink that water because I know what's going to happen. Not the Israelite woman. She's going to go in anyway with that pride. I'm going to go in, I'm going to say amen, I'm going to drink the water anyway. And then when that belly swell up and I smell something stink, that's your vagina. It's on fire. It's rotted out now. Ah, no, Jesus, God help me! Why is that? Why is it saying that? That's not edifying. Yes, it is. <laughs> verse, yeah. verse 23. And the priest shall write these curses in a book, and he shall blot them out with the bitter water, and he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water, water that causeth the curse, and the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. Then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand, and shall wave the offering before the Lord, and offer it upon the altar. And the priest shall take an handful of the offering, even the mo memorial thereof, and burn it upon the altar, and afterward shall cause the woman to drink the water. And when he hath made her to drink the water, it shall come to pass, that if she be defiled and have done trespass against her husband, that the water that causeth the curse, the curse shall enter into her, and becometh bitter in her belly, and her belly shall swell, and her thighs shall rot, and the woman shall be a curse among her people. Mm, 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 mm. Now, I'm going to help you all out here. All right? Go ahead. Start right. This is about Susanna, the daughter of Chelseus. It says she was very fair, I mean, very beautiful, and she feared the Lord. Read. The history of Susanna, verse 7. Now, when the people departed away at noon, Susanna went into her husband's garden to walk. And the two elders saw her going in every day and walking, so that their lust was inflamed toward her. Now notice, it says these were two priests. Two priests in Israel. Their lust was inflamed. Go ahead. And they perverted their own mind and turned away their eyes, that they might not look unto heaven, nor remember the judgment. This goes with Matthew 5. Let me see who's thinking. What did Christ say about this? What did Christ say about it? Oh, no, I don't want you. No, I don't want you. Don't call us. Let me hear you. Yeah, right here. Yep, you. Yeah, you. Hello, Bishop. Shalom. Brother Mordecai. Okay. Um, Matthew 5 and 20, verse 28 says, If you look upon a woman and lust after her, you've committed adultery already in your head. Exactly. That's what it said. Very good. So now, right here, right here. It says that these two elders saw her going in every day, walking so that their lust was inflamed toward her. You gotta look at that word, inflamed. You ever see the human torch go, flame on, and he bursts in the fire? That's how hot that lust was in them for this woman. Verse nine again. And they perverted their own mind. You gotta, now you can sit back and meditate on that. What does that mean? They perverted their own mind. Now, I'm, I, my mind is wild. I, oh, you know I love to do it up. Oh, y'all yeah, put that leg over there, bring it back this way. Your mind be gone. So these priests was thinking like that, two of them. And they even gonna look up to heaven. It's not, I'm not looking up. I'm gonna keep my eyes down, thinking about this woman over here. Go ahead. And they perverted their own mind and turned away their eyes that they may not look unto heaven, nor remember just judgment. They ain't even gonna remember just judgments. We don't wanna think about the Bible. Go ahead. And albeit and they were probably ripping fringes off too. Damn my fringes, rip them off. Go ahead. And albeit they both were wounded with her love, yet durst not one show another his grief. So they both of them was burning with perversion, but they didn't speak to the other one about it. Say, so I'm not gonna reveal that, I'm just gonna keep it in here. Go ahead. For they were ashamed to declare their lust that they desired to have to do with her. That they desired to have to do with her. Go ahead. Yet they watched diligently from day to day to see her. Ah, they watched diligently to watch her. Go ahead. And the one said to the other, Let us now go home, for it is dinner time. So when they were going out, they parted. You gotta imagine this. They go, uh, It's late, because everybody would hang out with Susanna's husband at his house. They said, You know, it's kind of late, it's dinner time. Let's all go home. Go ahead. So when they were going out, they departed, the one from the other. And turning back again, they and came. turning back again. So they made like they were leaving. 
they each turned back again. Go ahead. And turning back again, they came to the same place. And after that, they asked one another the cause. They acknowledged their lust. They acknowledged this. Uh, hey, I'm, a, I'm just, this is not me. Oh, eyes, I'm just using it. Hypothetical. We, you come in that side, I come in this side, we see each other. Bob, what you doing here? You gotta ask me what I'm doing. What you doing here? There's nothing. What you doing here? Chilling. Then the one said, you lusting after Susanna, ain't you? Uh, Susanna. Susanna, then he tell you, yeah, I got that thing too. I got that fire in me too. <laughs> Two old nasty priests, but go ahead. And these ain't Catholic priests either. These are Israelites. Go ahead. Then appointed they a time both together when they might find her alone. And it fell out as they watched a fit time. She went in as before with two maids only, and she was desirous to, to wash herself in the garden, for it was hot, and there was nobody there save the two elders that hid themselves and watched her. Then she said you to imagine her, that they hiding behind a tree or a rock, looking at her take a bath. Oh, look at that. Look at that girl right there. Wow, what I could do with that. Go ahead. Then she said to her maids, bring me oil and washing balls and shut the garden doors that I may wash me. Did she say oil? Yeah, she went, oh, just oil. Oh, let me stop. Go ahead. <laughs> <coughs> and they did as she bade them and shut the garden doors and went out themselves at privy doors to fetch the things that she had commanded them. But they saw not the elders because they were hid. Now when the maids were gone forth, the two, the two elders rose up and ran unto her, saying, Behold, the garden doors are shut, that no man can see us, and we are in love with thee. Therefore, consent unto us, and lie with us. Wait, they didn't say, lie with me, then lie with him. They said, lie with us. Let me think if I can think of some nice words here. That's called running a train. DP. Yeah. <laughs> now that's a funny story because that's actually true. Yeah. In Florida, I ain't gonna mention the Israelite campus. They're not with us though. One of the priests was banging a sister in the congregation with the with his homeboy who's in the congregation. They took turns on this sister. That's what we're reading about right here. That's why Paul said the things written aforetime was written for our learning. So don't, you'll be reading this and go, ah, I don't know. Oh, 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 oh yeah, these things is real. Read on. Verse 21, if thou will not, we will bear witness against thee that a young man was with thee, and therefore thou didst send away thy mates from thee. They said, we're gonna lie on you. We're gonna lie and say you was laying with a young man here if you don't lay with us. But go ahead. Then Susanna sighed and said, I am straightened on every side. For if I do this thing, it is death unto me. And if I do it not, I cannot escape your hands. It is better for me to fall into your hands and not do it than to sin in the sight of the Lord. Because she was righteous. Go ahead. With that, Susanna cried with a loud voice. And the two elders cried out against her. So she screamed, they scream, ah! Imagine three of them screaming. Ah! Ah! Everybody's screaming. Now everybody's running there. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Go ahead. Then ran the one and opened the garden door. So when the servants of the house heard the cry in the garden, they rushed in at the privy door to see what was done unto her. But when the elders had declared their matter, the servants were greatly ashamed. For there was never such a report made of Susanna. Here it is. So you gotta imagine these two elders, were, they were priests, well respected, but they was wicked as hell. So people, of course, naturally believed their report without examining the matter. Go ahead. And it came to pass the next day, when the people were assembled to her husband Jehoiakim, the two elders came also full of mischievous imagination against Susanna to put her to death. Because they couldn't have her, they'd rather have her put to death. We can't have you. Your husband, nobody gonna have you. That's how wicked these dudes was. Go ahead. And said before the people, send for Susanna, the daughter of, of Chelicus, Jehoiakim's wife. And so they sent. 
So she came with her father and mother, her children, and all her kindred. Now Susanna was a very delicate woman and, and beauteous to behold. And these wicked men commanded to uncover her face, for she was covered, that they might be filled with her beauty. Therefore, her So they didn't want to uncover her like we just read in Numbers 5. They just wanted to look at her one more time. Go ahead. Therefore, her friends and all that saw her wept. <coughs> then the two elders stood up in the midst of the people and laid their hands upon her. And she, weeping, looked up toward heaven, for her heart trusts in the Lord. And the elder said, as we walked in the garden alone, this woman came came in with two maids and shut the garden doors and sent the maids away. Then a young man who was there, who there was hid, came unto her and lied with her. Then we that stood in the corner of the garden, seeing this wickedness, ran into them. And when we saw them together, the man we could not hold, for he was stronger than we, and opened the door and leaped out. But having taken this woman, we asked who the young man was, but she would not tell us these things do we testify. Then the assembly believed them as those that were the elders and judges of the people. So they condemned her to death. Then Susanna cried with a loud voice and said, O everlasting God that knows the secrets and knows all things before they, before they be, thou knowest that they have borne false witness against me. And behold, I must die. Whereas I never did such things as these men have maliciously maliciously invented against me. And the Lord heard her voice. Stop. What I want y'all to see now. Her husband, where was he? He was there. But guess what? He was not allowed to speak for her. She had to speak for herself. That's what we read in Numbers, the fifth chapter as well. The husband could not play uh, interference to cover anything up because that's what some men do. I'm going to cover up her evil. Mm -mm. She had to speak for herself and she spoke. And the Lord heard her speak. Go ahead. Therefore, when she was led to be put to death, the Lord raised up the holy spirits of a young youth whose name was Daniel, who cried with a loud voice, I am clear from the blood of this woman. Then all the people turned them toward him and said, What mean these words that thou hast spoken? So he standing in the midst of them said, And you know what this happened? Daniel was young. He wasn't older at this time. Okay, he was young. This was before Babylon captured him and took him into exile. He was a young man. He said, uh -uh, I'm clear of this thing. I know exactly what happened. So he wasn't no mealy mouth. I'm scared to say something. He spoke up. Go ahead. So he standing in the midst of them said, Are ye such fools, ye sons of Israel, that without examination or knowledge of the truth ye have condemned a daughter of Israel? Return again to the place of judgment, for they have borne false witness against her. Now notice verse 47. I want to jump back to you. What mean these words that thou hast spoken? So Daniel obviously had already had some kind of reputation for them to even consider him. He wasn't no mook on the corner just, ah, no, stop. You know, people just jump in the argument. They don't know what the hell they're talking about. Daniel obviously has some kind of a reputation, which made the other elders say, hey, come up and share with us what you see in the spirit. Tell us what you see. That's what's going on here. Go ahead. Verse 50. Wherefore, all the people turned again in haste, and the elders said unto him, come, sit down among us, and show, and show it us. Seeing God hath given thee the honor of an elder. That shows he had a reputation. Go ahead. Then said Daniel unto them, Put these two aside, one far from another, and I will examine them. So when they were put asunder, one from another, he called one of them and said unto him, O thou that art waxing old in wickedness, now thy sins which thou hast committed aforetime are come to light. Notice what he's saying. This ain't the first time you did this, you wicked nooker. You've been doing this for a long time, but you never got caught. So Daniel knew the, the reputation of these dudes. He said, oh, it's coming to light now. You evil sons. Go ahead. For thou hast pronounced false judgment, and hast condemned the innocent, and hast let the guilty go free. Albeit the Lord saith, the innocent and righteous shalt shall thou not slay. Now then, if thou hast seen her, tell me, 
under what tree sawest thee? Sawest thou them company together? Who answered under a mystique tree? So there was obviously a bunch of trees in the garden. So Daniel said, which are these trees, because different trees, what are they under? He said, the mystique tree. Said, okay, we don't. And Daniel said, very well, thou hast lied against thine own head. For even now the angel of God hath received the sentence of God to cut thee in two. So he put them aside and commanded to bring the other and said unto him, O thou seed of Canaan and not of Judah, beauty hath deceived thee and lust hath perverted thine heart. So, no, so he's calling, he said, you act like the Canaanites. You a son of Canaan and not of Judah. Now he was Judah, but he was acting like a Canaanite. Like in Ezekiel 16, the Lord said, uh, what he said? He said, uh, your birth and your nativity is after the hit. Your father was a Hittite and your mother was an Amorite. It's the same thing. Insulting him, right? Thus he had dealt with the daughters of Israel, and they for fear company with you. Oh, that's some heavy thing right there. Verse 57 once again. Thus he had dealt with the daughters of Israel, and they for fear company with you. You did this to the northern kingdom. And the northern kingdom, because they was afraid of you, those women laid down with you. Oh, oh, go ahead. But the daughter of Judah would not abide your wickedness. Judah! <laughs> Woo, go ahead. <laughs> now therefore tell me, under what tree didst thou take them company together, who answered under a home tree? Now notice he gives a whole different tree in the garden. Lie, go ahead. Then said Daniel to him, well, Thou hast also lied against thine own head, for the angel of God waiteth with a sword to cut thee in two, that he may destroy you. With that, all the assembly cried out with a loud voice and praised God, who saveth them that trust in him. And they arose against the elders, for Daniel had convicted them of false witness by their own mouth. And according to the law of Moses, they did unto them in such sort as they mischievously intended to do to Which they maliciously intended to do to their neighbor. And they put them to death. Thus the innocent blood was saved the same day. Therefore, Calchias. Calchias. Therefore Calchias and his wife praised God for their daughter Susanna, with Jehoiakim her husband, and all the kindred before there was no dishonesty. Because, because there was no dishonesty found in her. From that day forth, Daniel had a great reputation in the sight of the people. Now, let's get that law in Deuteronomy 19. This is the law that had to be enforced. Deuteronomy 19, 16. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 19 and verse 16. Start at 15. Verse 15. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin in any sin that he sinneth at the mouth of two witnesses or that the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Now the question is, what if you have lying witnesses like we just read about in Susanna? Go ahead. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong. Here's a judgment for a false witness, a lying witness. Then both the men between whom the, the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition. And behold, if the witness be a false witness and have testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother. Remember, they wanted to put Susanna to what? Yeah, yeah. To death. Go ahead. So shalt thou put away the evil away from among you. So the same judgment they wanted to pass on innocent Susanna, it fell back on, a wit on those two false witnesses. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth.
So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.